I am working in Prague in the Czech Republic and on the flight over I saw in the in-flight magazine that there's an Irish guy here who does tours. So I thought, wow, his name is Marcus Bradshaw. I got in touch with him and asked him, do you mind if I have a look at your tour? And he said, sure, come along. The first thing you want to know is how hard a neck does an Irish man have to have to be a tour guide in a foreign city? When we go into the Jewish town, we look completely different. The answer to that question we'll get to. There's guidebooks and there's apps and there's, there's everything else. But at the same time, nothing actually beats having somebody who knows a huge amount of information about the thing and who's able to present it in what's often kind of lighthearted and, and interesting, but also is able to answer your questions. And that with every tour, each one is different because you've got different people asking different questions and interacting with each other. And it's really great fun. Because at the end of the day, people are on their holidays. The wheel is broken down into segments and each segment is a symbol. However, if we don't use the sun, let's say we use a star. Marcus runs a tour called the Naked Tour of Prague, but the only thing that's naked about the tour is the odd statue. The naked bit is a bit of a gimmick in a crowded tour market. What's not a gimmick, though, according to Marcus, is the service he and his colleagues offer. He takes individuals or small groups around Prague with a slightly different take on the usual. There's a magnificent little hidden monastery. There's a community of Franciscan monks living right in the middle of the city centre. Is there? And they have this terrific church. Oh. So we try and end off with something very beautiful. So okay. That's so that's a puppetry theatre? Yeah, yeah, it's a marionette theatre, yeah. Important. Um, especially under communism because puppets can say things that other people can't. Mm. This is a metro station, but it also does up as a nuclear fallout shelter. So it was built by the, built by the communist government in the 70s and the 80s uh, during the height of the Cold War. And so there's a network of 800 bunkers with provision for 400,000 people for 72 hours. So it's, it's really, really deep. And then at the bottom of the escalator, you've got this great big steel door on chains which can be pulled up in the event of an emergency seat at all. Rather weird. embarrassingly, however, in 2002, there were, there were catastrophic floods and they didn't close the system off in time and the water got into the metro and the whole thing then was completely flooded. I think the first thing to say about Prague is that there were so many tourists there. Um, it's a city of 1.2 million people last year got 7.2 million tourists. It's a lot of people and they all seem to be in the same place at the same time. And so the trick then is not to go to the same place at the same time as they are there. And so it means that things like the castle, don't go there during the day, go there at night, the Charles Bridge, go there very early in the morning. The old town, the tourists following each other around in pretty defined paths, so what you should do is head off at a right angle. Actually, it's not such a leap for Marcus to be a Prague tour guide. He settled in Prague with his partner and now speaks Czech. I came here in September 2012 on the Erasmus programme. I had two options. I could go to Manchester or I could go to Prague. And um, I had never been to Prague before. I'd never been to a post-communist country before. And uh, it also was much cheaper to come here than to go to Manchester. So I said, OK, Prague it is. So that's how I got here. Then on the cross, you've got the face of Christ on the cloth. That's called the Vera icon, or the true image. So that's where we get the name Veronica from. How did you decide about being a guide here? It's a bit cheeky, isn't uh, it? Yeah, it well, it was, so what happened was I, I very ambitiously came on the exchange program without enough money to survive the second semester. And so I knew that I was going to need a, a, a job at some point. I'd, I'd worked in Kilmainham and I'd worked in, in Dublin and in, in Trinity College as a guide, so had loads of experience and uh, I thought, oh sure, I might work as a guide here because I was studying Czech history and I went on a tour with an existing company and I was like, oh, that wasn't very good at all uh, I could do better myself What was wrong with it? Um, there was just no analysis um, There was things were presented as very black and white and quite often things are much more shades of grey than that um, 
and you know I was studying history in university so there's just kind of like I was getting a much deeper understanding of things in in class than what I saw on the tour and I said okay I can definitely do better than that and uh, so that was it I went and I got a license and set myself up as a tour guide and can you make a living at it uh, yeah, five years later I seem to be able to. Right. <laughs> Definitely it's been a learning experience. I think Douglas Adams says the definition of a learning experience is the thing that you've just done. Don't do that again. Even when he's not guiding, Marcus is enjoying the sights. Irish Catholicism hasn't got a patch in any of this. <laughs> this <is> not why. <laughs> just the amount of, just the sheer amount of money that the, the, the Austrian Empire managed to pull together. Tell me one secret place to go to in Prague that people don't normally know about. One secret place. Um, there, if you go, just if you turn just off Wenceslas Square, there is a pub called Upinkasu and it is the first pub in Prague to serve the Pilsner beer and they have the most magnificent beer garden which is wedged between the back of the pub and a Franciscan monastery that dates from 1347. No one knows it's there and it's absolutely spectacular. Marcus Bradshaw, the naked tour guide of Prague. <laughs> 